Yes, kicking us off for all those young drivers out there on their L's. Uh, the hazard perception test can now be done online. Really? So as opposed to going into Service SA, going in in person, doing it there, which sees about 30,000 tests a year, mm. you do it online now. So pretty much it's like a game on your computer. How does that work with when it comes to cheating? No idea. Yeah. No idea how they're safe proof in that. Because I know, like, when back when I had to go do it, I'm sure it was the same with you, when you went into Service SA, you couldn't take your phone or anything in with you. Yeah, no, they're quite protective of it, aren't they? Mm. So, yeah, who knows how they're going to defend against that. But at the moment, yeah, it'll be done on your laptop. And, of course, it has a perception. It works on uh, trying to, you know, be fast, be reactive, and you're just doing clicks. Yeah. So it's like doing a video game at home on your laptop now. Yeah, interesting. I'll be interested to see how that goes. Exactly. In other technology stuff here in Australia, yeah, we've been labelled as the country number one in the world out of any other country that uses AI the most. Really? So we, <laughs> as Australians, I you don't know, know that's... You know it's being used for no good as yeah. well. Also, I feel like that's just saying you're also number one in the world for being lazy when it comes to uni, <laughs> work. You know what I saw the other day? I saw uh, people are starting to use AI like ChatGPT to win arguments with their partners. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. so I'll oh, just hold so, on one sec. Yeah, so they're going away. They're putting in what their partner has said, getting AI to spit back out what you should re rebuttal with. Yeah, right. So there's been an argument about the decor in the house. Yeah. Shouldn't have bought that rug. Hang on, let me go in the bathroom for a second, take my phone. That's okay. it. You know, you know Aussies are using chat GPT for no good. Well, so, I mean, it's no surprising. Yeah, apparently we had more than 38 million searches on <laughs> chat GPT, which is just a world record. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's bring it down, guys. And in other news, King Charles and Queen Camilla are officially in Australia. They've just touched down for a five-day visit. It's their first visit since 2022. So if you see them, say good day. Yeah, I think they just touched down in Canberra. Yeah, uh, they were in Sydney earlier on, but yeah, they've just touched down in Canberra. So they're over there at the moment. I'm not sure if they're coming to Adelaide. I oh, think they highly, are. Highly doubt it. No, I think they are. Well, they're coming to Adelaide. I'm pretty sure. We'll, we'll check back on that for well, you. So we get snubbed by the rock stars, but we get the boring old royals here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They're royals, mate. Watch your mouth. <laughs> Well, I'd like to see if anyone can top that dinner party story. Well, I actually have a pretty good one. Nobody was prepared for what would come out of his mouth. Got a story you can't wait to tell? Tom and Callum's best stories on Fresh 92.7. That's right, Callum. Every Monday morning, we want to hear your best stories, Adelaide. The best stories that have stuck around with you in your head that you tell at every dinner party, at every pub session. It is your best stories. You can head to our website, fresh927.com.au. Tell us your best story there. We'll give you a call back every Monday. We want to hear your best stories. Yeah, so this came from a bunch of the Fresh fam coming up to us at events and stuff and saying, hey, look, I've got a really funny story. I don't know where it fits in, but I want to tell it on the radio somehow. So this is it. This is your freedom to say, hey, this is the best story you got. Tell it on the radio so everyone can hear. That's it. It can be absolutely anything. It, ha it doesn't have to be about anything in particular. It is just your best story. And this morning's best story is coming from Freeling. We got Ash on the line. Ash, good morning, mate. How are you going? Morning, lads. How are we going? Very, Very good. Very well. Now, Ash, what's your best story? So about 15 years ago, uh, I decided as uh, any impulsive teenager would that I wanted to... Uh, buy a tattoo gun and uh, start practicing <laughs> on all of my friends. And now I, I, I wouldn't say I'm a, a good drawer or anything like that. I just, uh, I don't know, sort of, I don't know, impulse buy, yeah, good old yeah. eBay back in the day, you know. So, uh, yeah, bought a tattoo gun. And uh, anyway, I've, we uh, at that time I was um, living with my uh, my wife at her parents' place and uh, had a couple of friends over for a few drinks and, um Next thing you know, it comes up, oh, you know, you should get the tattoo gun out, you know, and uh, my best mate, <laughs> who is uh, still one of my best mates today, is like, you know what I've always wanted? I've always wanted a tattoo of a man mowing my pubic hair. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh. oh, God. So, I went, you know, the minute you said tattoo gun, I knew this spelt trouble, but gee whiz. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, we thought uh, we thought, all right, what what are we going to do? And obviously, he needed to shave the area, so he goes into uh, inside the house, starts shaving the area to prepare for it, and uh, yeah, then my outlaws get home. So all I can hear is my mother-in-law going, ah, oh, my God, and she's walked into the bathroom of him shaving. Caught him so, red-handed. <laughs> caught, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, both hands full, apparently. So, uh, yeah. so he says. <laughs> yeah, so he says, yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, so anyway, he does that. We get we go back outside, so, we're, you know, all hygienic. We're doing it outside. We're like, what can he possibly lay on? Um, so we pull out the old trampoline, as you do. So <laughs> what, what could be worse? <laughs> so, you know, it's all, it's all pretty legit at this point, I think. You know, what do you expect? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, we start doing it. Now, you got to remember, like, this guy's my best mate, still is to this day. And uh, trying to work out where you stick your hands while you're trying to tattoo this area. On one of your mates. Is, um, I don't think no matter what happened, it was never going to be my best work. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we get the job done. It's, it's very ordinary, but we get the job done. It's all good. Anyway, he rings me the next morning and he, he's all whispering. And he goes, Ash, Ash. He goes, the man's got three legs. The tattoo. I was the- like, you're kidding me. The man I tattooed on him has three legs. <laughs> Some tripod lawnmower guy. <laughs> yeah. Not the only tripod oh. on. Hey. <laughs> no. no. It gets even better. So only, uh, not last year, the year before, he uh, finally settled down and got married. So in my uh, best man speech, I decided to tell this story. So I, I obviously tell the story like I just did. Yeah. And I get to the end of the story and, and, and say about how he rang me up and said about the three legs. His new four and Renan says to him, I didn't know to say he had three legs. So all that time, she had ever, never even noticed that the lawnmower <laughs> man has three legs. Had no idea. I was like, well, obviously you're not doing your job properly. So. <laughs> Ash, i got to know, when you did the tattoo, was it a free hand or did you get a stencil? Yeah, I think we did a little tiny stencil, but yeah. um, again, it was pretty average. Like, we'd been drinking responsibly all day. So, and Ash, was that the last time you used a tattoo gun? Surely you haven't stepped into the ranks again. Oh, no, I did a few other loose ones, but yeah. Man, six I've, legs. I've definitely retired it now. So. <laughs> Uh, too many complaints, you know. Ash, that is one of the all-time great stories. Thank you so much for sharing it. No problem. My pleasure. Cheers, Cheers. Ash. Hey, if you've got a great story just like Ash, all you got to do is head to our website, fresh927.com.au, and tell us your best story there, and you could hear it on The Brecky Show every Monday morning. You're with Tom and Callum. Callum, Yo. we have been invited to something uh, as of last week that feels like it should probably be illegal. Yes, and <laughs> it's just a bit of an odd request. It's an odd invite. Uh, yeah, it, I don't know how to feel about it. It's nothing It's nothing bad, so no. say, Paul, if you are listening, it's not actually illegal. What we've been invited to is a Taco Tuesday on a, a Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. It was a completely <laughs> bizarre one, and I feel like it's blasphemy to anyone who loves the Taco Tuesday or Mexican food in general. A Wednesday mm. night on the tacos is just a bit odd. No, no, here's the thing. You can have tacos any night of the week. It's fine, right? Taco Tuesday is the thing, and it's it's a, it's good fun to have tacos mm. on a Tuesday, but you can have them any day of the week. I'm completely fine with that. It's the fact that we've been invited to a Taco Tuesday but it is on a Wednesday. It is titled Taco <laughs> yeah. Tuesday on a Wednesday. That's it. So that, I think that's where it comes in, where it's a bit bizarre, that literally in the title it says Taco Tuesday brackets. <laughs> Who's <laughs> using brackets and punctuation for a taco invite? Mexicans should be about the festivities <laughs> and the fun, yet they've done brackets saying, but it's a Wednesday, yeah. just letting you Keep know. Keep your grammar out of my Taco <laughs> Tuesdays, buddy. We don't care for grammar <laughs> for fun occasions like eating Mexican food, so stick out of it. But I feel like there's so many things like this that, you know, it, it feels like... Like it should be illegal. We're going to go to the text line in a moment. What feels like it should be illegal? Yeah, there's so many different ones. I mean, our social media, Gavin, uh, we clocked onto him walking around outside with a mug of coffee, mm. a full mug, ceramic mug, going down the streets with the, and he's officially lost it. I think that's a sign of, one, a crazy person, also something that should be illegal. Well, I mean, if we look back at the history of our social media men here at Fresh 92.7, they do go a little bonkers after it. <laughs> after a while, they go mad. The computer <laughs> fries their brain. After a <laughs> certain amount of months, yeah, they all start to go a bit silly and crazy. And yes, Gavin, our, social, our current social media man, has started roaming the streets with a mug of coffee. Either, you know, just go buy a takeaway cup or get like a... Ther- the, the worst part is he has a little thermos thing for yep. his coffee. He decides to walk the streets with a mug, which I think is the most unhinged thing you can see. <laughs> which I'm starting to think all these things that we're deeming should be illegal are just things that irk us <laughs> about <laughs> our colleagues and people around us. Absolutely not. They should be illegal. <laughs> Another thing that I think should be illegal that um, I'm actually guilty of. You're a culprit of. Yeah. So lately I've been, when I get home, the first thing I want to do is just get in the shower, rinse Mm. the sins of the day away. Sure. 
But what I've been doing lately is getting in the shower, showering, halfway through the shower, realizing uh, I should probably get some exercise in. Stop the shower, get out, exercise, don't return to the shower. Right, it's, a, it's just odd. It's a, it, would it not be a quick fix just to exercise first? Yes, it would. Surely but you can I, put that in your planner. You can't forget to exercise. It's the last thing I want to do. <laughs> All I want to do is shower. So now I'm just showering, then exercising and it's not re It's just pointless. <laughs> Well, what no, it's doing? not pointless because I'm not getting back in the shower. It just seems a bit gross. Like you're going to be oh, covered in sweat and go gross, to bed yeah. in sweat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just set, set an event planner. You know, it goes taco Wednesday, exercise, then shower. Using the hair dryer yeah. to get the sweat off. What feels like it should be illegal, Adelaide? Got this text coming through here. Uh, getting a quote from one guy and then using another person for the job. Good stuff. Got this text here as well. Uh, going to a cafe or restaurant and using their bathroom. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. That does feel illegal, doesn't well, it? Sometimes you, they don't even let you. Well, you feel like you're really <laughs> screwing them over. You should buy something. Even if it's just a dollar cookie from a cafe, whatever. You don't have to get a meal. Just get something. How about this one from Mark? Facing backwards in an elevator. Seen a bloke at work do it twice. Thought he was taking the piss. He's just an odd unit. <laughs> Jeez, the worst things come in threes. <laughs> That would be... I don't know what I would think if I if an elevator came down and there's a guy already in there facing backwards. Yeah. I'm not getting in that elevator. I would think I've been summoned in there by an evil billionaire. Like, he's going to turn around and say, I brought you here for a reason. Yeah, he's on a swivel chair with a hairless cat. <laughs> uh, this one here. Using the happy washers to have my car clean in just minutes compared to me doing it at home for what feels like an hour. Uh, feels like it shouldn't exist. Yeah. yeah I guess, yeah, time saving the happy there. washers. Yeah, mm, good stuff. <laughs> this one's just unhinged. Ran out of cutlery at home, so I used a spoon to eat my meat pie. Whoa! Wouldn't Whoa. you just use your hands at that point? I thought Taco Wednesday was blasphemy. <laughs> Eating an Australiana pie with a spoon, <laughs> scooping out the meat—that's foul. That's I'm terrible. Sorry. <laughs> Morning, fellas. Seeing those people that are wear hoodies and trackies on days like today makes me hot and bothered just looking at them. Outlaw it. It is true, and it's one of those yeah. things when you see someone in a hoodie on a day that's thirty plus degrees and it's not affecting you. You're mm. not wearing the hoodie, but for some reason it makes you feel disgusting and hot. <laughs> yeah, it does. Hey, just got a text come through from Ben Monroe, who was at the drags yesterday. Of course, we were at the Bend all weekend. <laughs> he, uh, he's texting saying, those shorts you were wearing at the drags yesterday, Tom. Yeah, yeah the skin-tight short shorts. shorts wearing yeah. nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bloody ticked off. Simon Mungrel. Oh, jeez, it's ticked off, Tom. You think this company would budget for stationery and tables, but we've installed a boxing bag well, just so you can <laughs> unleash the rage and not do this segment. <laughs> they, they've nailed the, the desk down, <laughs> actually. I can't flip it anymore. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm seething at the teeth, mate. Yep. So Friday, last week, we'd finished up the show, wrapped up the show, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to go buy some breakfast this morning. I sure. felt, felt like... It was a night, it was raining, it was raining, it was coming down. I felt like I just want to sit in the cafe, collect my thoughts, and eat some nice bacon and eggs. This isn't where it's going, right? Old man ticked off at the weather kind of style. The rain wasn't pissing you off. Well, it's, it, in a sense, it was. So I'm walking down Rundle Mall, right? It is raining. It's not like bucketing down, but it's raining. And I am trying to stick to the side where mm. you're kind of under the cover of the shops. Sure. And like all the... All the little, awnings. The, yeah, the awnings of the shops and they cover you from the rain. Yeah. And then out in the middle, it's, you know, it's it's a bloodbath out there. If you, it's, you're going to get wet if you're out in the middle. There's no cover at all. Sure. So everyone flocks to the sides, as you do. What's really ticking me off, Callum, is the people that are going to the sides undercover that have umbrellas. <laughs> You have so an umbrella, go. you get out, you go into the rain. If you're a prepared person that decides oh, I'm going to take an umbrella with me, you can stand in the rain, get out of the cover for all of us non-umbrella people. It's like you're saying, look, you're a soldier, you got a bulletproof vest on, you get the hell out there. You go for first. For everyone else that's not covered or protected, that's where you can stay behind enemy lines. No, because then it, then it gets too cluttered on the sides. Und undercover, it gets too cluttered. Everyone's moving so slowly because so many people are trying to avoid the rain. And then you've got people with their umbrellas still up, walking with the umbrellas over them like there's rain got to hit them. <laughs> Take, put your umbrella away. Don't bring it out if you're not going to put it to use. I feel like Rundle Mall just has the biggest gripes with it in general, and this oh. will be one of the top ones. Brace yourself for more rain, guys, because this is going to be a hazard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so ticked off. 
A few months ago, I attempted to break a world record. Yes. It's currently held by a fellow Adelaidean, Omkar Palav, and it is typing the alphabet with nothing but your nose, and he did it in 20.51 seconds. It was an impressive feat. Uh, Mm. As your coach, I was quite proud that you got close to it, and then we found out you had to put spaces in between the letters, and that really shook the typing record world. I believe I beat it, but then we found out, yes, there had to be a space in between, and I think I got about two seconds Mm. shy, but we only had a week to try and break it. Yep. Now, for the last month, I've been keeping a close eye on another world record that was currently set over in uh, Brisbane. Yep. And it is the most amount of underwear put on in (laughs) one minute. So immediately we've looked at this and thought, geez, this is right up our alley. It's stupid. It's yeah. a bit of fun, but it's also doable. So his name's Nicholas Manning, and he managed to slip on 44 pairs of underwear in one minute. And to the Fresh fam out there, go have a sus online. Have a look at the video. I pissed it because I think it is the funniest thing ever. You know when they talk about, oh, someone's like in their, you know, someone's at the most vulnerable when they've got food poisoning or something like that. Mm. Scratch that. This guy's at his most vulnerable bending over, doing squats, putting 45 pairs of underwear on. It's the weirdest sight to see a human doing. Well, it's funny to like get an insight of the training leading up to how many underwear you can put on, how many pairs of underpa- underwear you can put on yeah. in one minute. He was doing squats every chance he got, he said, because there's so much squatting doing it. And the way he did it, he sort of set up the underwear in a line all, all rinsed out. Yeah, and yeah. then he'd squat in, get it, next one squat, put it up. And he managed to get 44 pairs on in one minute. To me, Callum, I think this is beatable. I think it's beatable too. I think we could smash this out of the park quite easily. I mean, looking at this guy, he's also a little bit older. Maybe his legs mm. are a bit jarred. We're young, young stallions <laughs> of the underpants game. <laughs> Maybe we can give it a crack. That's it. Exactly right. We're the young underdogs right now. So we want to give this a crack. We're going to spend the week training up to see if we can beat this world record, the most amount of underwear put on in one minute. We're going to go to the text line here, though, Callum. We're not sure which one of us should take on this world record attempt, so we want you to text in Adelaide, Tom or Callum, who should be doing this world record? Who should be having an attempt at this? And it's such a weird question. I mean, you're going to have to... Let's look at the facts, right? You're going to have to have some muscle strength in the legs... Uh, some bulky squat jumps. It's a bit of a mental game going through. You know, it could it could tie you out as you're going down to the end of that fish, finish line. And the, the other thing is, do you, are we going to have to go purchase like quite big underwear for once we start hitting the 30s or 40s? Because it's going to start bunching up. Do we need to go get larger underwear? There's so <laughs> many different variables in this world record attempt. On the text line, uh, the first one that came through, Someone said definitely Tom, 150% Tom. Cool. That's fine. I think, uh, (laughs) but what what brings someone to say 150%? I'm so sure that Tom's going to be great at putting underwear on. (laughs) Like, why the confidence? I struggle most mornings, to be honest. (laughs) Slipping around your bedroom. (laughs) Falling over, getting the legs stuck, like one leg stuck. Oh, God. (laughs) Slip on a Hot Wheels car. (laughs) This one here, uh, someone said both of you... Both of you double the chance of getting a world record. Okay, so saying both of us should do it. Uh, what a promo for you and your show if you get the re- world record. Whoop, whoop. Mm. They've said on the text <laughs> line as well. Very excited. Yeah. The whoop, whoop does it for me. <laughs> uh, it's, not just, it's not just for us, this world record. This is for the whole Fresh fam. This is this is going to be a world record that we can uh, we can hang here on yep. a plaque in the studio. It's the Fresh Fam's world record. How good would that be? I mean, you get the plaque with the little sticker on it as well from the Guinness Book of World Records. We want that. Hey, this text here. You both have chicken legs, so you'll both be good for slipping underwear on. <laughs> All right, that's the sort of morale we don't need around here. <laughs> Always skipping legs, eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, there you go. All right. The two of us again. Uh, another text coming through here saying, I think Callum seems like he knows his way around a pair of underwear. Good stuff. Don't know what that means, <laughs> mate. What- <laughs> Paid someone to text that in. <laughs> <laughs> Over the weekend, we were up in Tail and Bend at yes. the Dragway at the Bend for the Spring Nationals event. Uh, we had the, the <laughs> privilege of being able to MC the whole event and massive shout out to all the freshies that were down there. We got stopped heaps of times by a lot of fresh listeners. Uh, so shout out to everyone who came up and said g'day. Yeah, there was quite a few. And for a lot of those guys that were there the last time we came earlier in the year to do this stuff for the Bend, uh, I guess you could say that now that it's twice we've done it, we are rev heads. Yeah. Officially. <laughs> 
Please. So we've got the sticker stick sticker of approval, and uh, that's yep. what our career path looks like well, now. We've given ourselves a sticker yeah. of approval. Uh, in fact, someone came up to us and said, "The fact you're calling yourselves rev heads means you're not rev heads." Mm, and he was a rev head, <laughs> the good kind of rev head, an actual one. No, but it was a great event. It was a great a great weekend being up there as well. Beautiful weather for the drags, of course, as well. There was even a, a St- Australian record. Yes. That Insane was, stuff. Yeah, so that was a great day. Uh, very exciting for that team. But right now, we want to talk about the trip up because our mate uh, Cam, he he's like one of the media people up at the bend and he sort of organised us to come down and he organised us a place to stay mm. and it was just some, some house sort of out a little bit far away from the track, kind of in the middle of nowhere. And the way he kept referring to it was the batch pad. Yep, yep. So, so you, you're in for high expectations when you're calling it the batch pad. And yeah. yes, if you're wondering, it would be me, Tom, and Cam being the bachelors in this pad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're driving up there. We're probably about 10 minutes out. And we get a call from Cam. He says, oh, g'day. Yeah, I've just got to run into town, into Tail and Bend for a little bit. Meet me at the hotel. By the way, we're not going to be staying at the batch pad anymore. I've got us a room at the hotel. So we got to, we ended up getting to stay in the beautiful Ridges Hotel they yes. have there at the track. And we get there, we roll up. He's still in town. Like, no worries. He's, he didn't tell us what he was doing. Probably just getting some supplies or something. So we check out the room. Everything's looking all good. And then he texts us saying, hey, boys, uh, dinner at 8 o'clock. I'll meet you there at the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Happy days. Walk That's down fine. to the restaurant. He's not there yet, so he's sitting with one of his co-workers. He texts us again saying, running a bit late, just order me dinner. I'll be there as soon as I can. Mm. The guy doesn't get there till 9 o'clock. Yeah, late dinner for Cam, <laughs> and we find out that he's been at a little street party. Yeah, the whole time he was just at a street party in town, and now he's rolled up. He's eating his cold schnitzel. And then we head back to the room. Yeah, exactly right. And if you haven't figured it out yet, this is just us ripping into our mate Cam. He is disorganised. <laughs> it's all hell. All this great stuff happens at the band, you know, world records, things like that. But what happens behind closed doors when our mate organises everything? We get back to the hotel room, wanting to tuck her in, have a sleep, uh, get a good rest before the next day, right? Yeah. You'd fallen asleep at this point, but he turns to me. We had to share the same bed. <laughs> Mm. Because we're all crammed into this one room. So one room, <laughs> one bed, three men. Yeah, so you're on the sofa bed, you're fast asleep, I'm bunking with Cam, didn't realise that was going to be a thing, that's fine, whatever. He turns to me and says, hey, mate, can you chuck me my iPad? I'm thinking, well, we're going to sleep, what's the point of this? Give it to him. He then proceeds to watch, with the lights off, I reckon an hour, hour and a half of this true crime, gory doco... <laughs> Some oh, underbelly oh. thing about Sydney gangs on full blast while we're both trying to sleep. And I'm thinking, I think I just would have rather the batch pad <laughs> alone, <laughs> alone from Cam. 